This episode of Couch Potatoes Unite! Exclamation point is sponsored by Blue Bridge Games. For the games and gifts you won't find anywhere else, head to Grand Rapids, Michigan's friendliest local game store, Blue Bridge Games. Blue Bridge Games carries an extensive line of board games, card games, role-playing tabletop games, Magic the Gathering, and more. Stop into their storefront on East Fulton or shop with them online at bluebridgegames.com. You say you want to watch a drama. You say you want to watch a comedy. Well, you can watch it with your mama. Or you can watch it with your daddy. You'll even sit and watch it with your middle schooler. So you can come and talk around our water cooler. We're watching all day and all night. Couch Potatoes Unite. Whoa, whoa. Couch Potatoes Unite. Whoa. a brand new episode of the podcast entitled Couch Potatoes Unite! Exclamation point, which is based on a blog of the same name because it's not so shocking that after all this time we've kept this name. I think you'd agree. My name is Kylie and I love TV. If you feel the same, keep listening and or checking out our website, couchpotatoesunite.wordpress.com as you're bound to find some common ground or something you like. For Couch Potatoes Unite, we're all about the wonders and the unique long-form storytelling of the small screen. CPU, exclamation point, hopes have been following releases of brand new episodes of the podcast on Wednesdays, as well as new blog entries on some Tuesdays. And as always, we have several more new episodes on the way. Because the panels and I live lives behind our podcast, the episodes are published once per week. Subscribe to the website or the podcast via iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, CastBox, Amazon Music, basically wherever you get your podcasts to stay on top of brand new episodes. Episodes already published discuss a variety of shows around the water cooler, including, but not limited to, Stranger Things, iZombie, The Good Place, Game of Thrones, Mr. Robot, Altered Carbon, The Orville, Westworld, Fuller House, Schitt's Creek, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., The Crown, Big Little Lies, Doctor Who, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, Supernatural, Riverdale, This Is Us, and Charmed. Plus, new episodes are in the works, including revisits for The Hundred, Outlander, Grace and Frankie, the American Horror Story franchise series panel, new name. We'll talk about season one of American Horror Stories. The Good Doctor panel will catch up on season four. And the Star Trek 50 Plus series will discuss season one of Deep Space Nine. We'll be launching new panels covering Killing Eve, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, American Gods, Grey's Anatomy, Cobra Kai, Piggy Blinders, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, A Discovery of Witches, The Hauntings of Hill House and Bly Manor, Titans and Umbrella Academy. And because we look back at shows now past, we'll travel through time and experience all sorts of identities with Quantum Leap. We'll cry bazinga for Big Bang Theory. We'll navigate the witty political satire of Parks and Recreation. We'll become psychos for Psych. We'll go where everybody knows your name with cheers. We hope you'll be listening when we talk about Frasier. We'll know that's what she said when we talk about The Office, both from the UK and the USA. We'll show off our Kung Fu for Chuck, and we'll debate whether saving the cheerleader actually saved the world by looking at all iterations of heroes. By the way, did you know that CPU also from time to time goes live? We've been live from bunkers, comedy shows, comic cons, and game stores. Plus, we're planning more live appearances and other cool stuff, including what are these transformative times. So make sure you like or follow us at our Facebook page, our Twitter at CPU Podcast, our Instagram at Couch Potatoes Unite, or subscribe to the website, YouTube channel, Apple iTunes channel, Stitcher Radio channel, or find us on Google Podcasts, Spotify, CastBox, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music. In the meantime, if you don't hear a show on this podcast, format fellow panelists and I still write reviews and we always seek new panelists so if you have any interest in joining the discussion say hello by finding us at any of the outlets I've mentioned at the very least stop by and leave us a thumbs up comment or review we like feedback just don't bury us alive with your feedback see what I did there especially after what will inevitably be the spiciness of this particular review you know it's coming today we're around the water cooler and continuing another of CPU's podcast series this series formerly did not have a fixed number of episodes like other series we do. Rather, it had been ongoing because it covered a number of shows that fall under one large umbrella of a universe of comic book adaptations. Except, in the last year, the CW has proceeded to cancel several of these series or allowed others to end without replacing them, putting this panel's ongoing non-fixed days into the decidedly not ongoing and more fixed column. With that said, today's episode is episode 31 of our DCTU 
new series in which our DCTU expert panel discusses the DC television universe, i.e. television programs adapted from DC comic book properties that have morphed and expanded into one television universe. In this 31st episode of our DCTU podcast series, we revisit Black Lightning, specifically Season 4, which aired from February 8th to May 24th, 2021, with a total of 13 episodes, all on the CW. To remind the listener, Black Lightning is an American superhero drama television series developed by Salim Akil that is based on the character of the same name, created by Tony Isabella and Trevor Von Eden, featured in publications of DC Comics. Cross Williams stars as the titular character alongside China Ann McLean, Nefessa Williams, Christine Adams, Marvin Crandon Jones III, Damon Gupton, James Ramar, Jordan Calloway, and Chantal Twi as of season four. The series focused on Jefferson Pierce, played by William. Williams, the principal of Garfield High School in the city of Freeland, who almost a decade prior to the time period starting the series, was a superhero called Black Lightning until he retired after the effect that his vigilante life had on his family. Jefferson is forced to become Black Lightning again when the 100, Freeland's most feared criminal gang, initially led by Tobias Whale, played by Jones, takes over the city. Today in the 31st episode of our DCTU series, our DCTU panel, namely Kyle, Hillary Spencer, Kristen, and Nick, returns to focus specifically upon season four of Black Lightning and to look back at Black Lightning as a whole now that all is said and done, some might say mercifully. Before we get too far into the discussion, though, I'm going to take a moment to take the panel's temperature because, after all, as we all know, sometimes a show can take turns for the better or worse in our heads, or it can continue its level of awesomeness or lack thereof, depending upon story evolution. As always, it should be noted that all of our panelists have watched all episodes of Black Lightning and will, without doubt, discuss sensitive plot points. So for those of you who are not caught up on Black Lightning, listen at your own risk as there may be major spoilers. Welcome back, panel! After such a long time, how are you? It has been a while. Hi. Hello. Hey, I was trying to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> so we are recording this via Zoom. <laughs> we have some hybrid recording going on. Yes, it's been an awfully long time since our DCTU panel was together or has been together. And now we are in the process of catching up a little bit and returning to some of these shows, many of which are winding down, like this one, though there are a couple that are still out there. But we have to keep going because we're, we're nothing if not stalwart completionists, or at least that's they're going to say I made them do this. So without further ado, what I'd like to do is take you through the standard CPU character question, which changes with each show we do for the last season of Black Lightning. Now... I have tweaked this one a little, but not entirely a lot because, well, A, I don't think you're going to change much, and B, they didn't change much, and really it was a shorter season, which was probably good all told. So how would you rate your interest in Black Lightning following the airing and viewing of the final season? Would you say you adore the show, you love everything about it, from its faithful representation and depiction of race and culture to its unflinching social commentary, from its heartfelt family-centric storytelling to its bomb superhero couture and associated gadgets. Besides, you'll watch what you want to watch because you are a grown-ass woman, like Anissa Pierce, a.k.a. Thunder. Do you love this show because it's a part of you to the point that you can't avoid it? It's everything you are, and even though it has its ups and downs, you still wouldn't trade it for the world because this is your life and you'll live it by any means necessary. Also, the music slams like Jefferson Pierce, aka Black Lightning. Do you like this show because you particularly like the main character? In your opinion, he's a good man, a great hero, an upstanding gentleman, and watching him and his family feels like family to you. Plus, you're especially mesmerized by all the tech and appreciate the upgrades you saw in the final season, like Peter Gamby. Do you like this show's lighter side when it can take moments to laugh at itself and not be so serious, though you also learn to appreciate the show's darker sides in the end? Let's be real, though. You watched the whole thing anyway because it became a bit of an addiction for you, admittedly not a healthy one, even if doing so might have blown up in your face or blown up your face, like Jennifer Pierce, a.k.a. Lightning. Do you enjoy this show somewhat? Though when all is said and done, you're probably most in it for the Anissa Grace partnership. It keeps changing so much, it feels like the story is never stable for long. Plus, it overly relies on the concept of metas and meta threats, when perhaps its strength is the regular lives or regular human family ties at its core. 
like Grace Choi, aka Wild. You don't love everything about this show? You wonder how a superhero vigilante can effectively hold a family and therefore the show together, and you're not convinced that it's possible. Still, you find yourself more addicted to the show than you care to admit, and you kept watching because your family also watched it, like Lynn Stewart. Do you find the show too disjointed and messy in its presentation to be effectively engaging or entertaining? Sometimes it even causes you pain to watch it. Nevertheless, you keep persevering because you feel like you have no other choice, even if you can't always identify from where that impetus comes, like Khalil Payne, aka Painkiller. Would you say the only thing you can stand about the show is its villains, who are delightfully complex, nuanced, and ruthless? Otherwise, you wouldn't care if the whole thing burned to the ground. You want nothing more than to see Black Lightning buried like Tobias Whale. Or you stopped watching this show and or jumped the shark because even though your friends watched it, and even if it held some intrigue to start, you finally gave up questioning your friend's judgment or judgments for choosing to watch this show, preferring to find one that better suits your preferences. Or, spoiler, you died at the end of season three, so there was no reason to return to watching this show. Like Bill Henderson. Who would like to begin? Don't all jump up at once! <laughs> I'll start. Oh, I'll bite the bullet. I'll start. <laughs> Hi, my name's Kristen. Hi, Kristen. Hi. So last time, it looks like I was three. I was Painkiller, Tobias Whale, and Bill Henderson. But this was before Bill Henderson died. So this time, I'm still Painkiller. I'm still Tobias Whale. It's too disjointed. Causes me pain to watch it. I have to persevere because we had to record this episode. And I wouldn't care if the whole thing burned to the ground. And thankfully it has. We are done. <laughs> Finally. I will not miss this show. So I'm still Painkiller and Tobias Whale. Okay. Welcome back, Kristen. Starting off Thanks. well just like the last time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I could piggyback off the back of that. This is Spencer. Hi, Spencer. Hey there. And I will say that I am Painkiller with a splash of Tobias Whale. But really wish I could say I was Bill Henderson and it actually died at the end of watching season three so I wouldn't have to suffer season four. You wanted to die? It would have been better. Okay, that's just, <laughs> that's so morose. Last time you were just painkiller. We'll, we'll, we'll add your splash of Tobias and call it good. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. He usually talks more. <laughs> I would have jumped in sooner. This is Nick. Hi, Nick. I was last time between Henderson and Painkiller, and this time I'm I'm just Painkiller. It was really hard to care about what was happening in the show, especially in season four, for reasons we'll get into during this podcast. But I am also not sad that it is not coming back for a fifth season. Fair enough. Welcome back, Nick. All right, I am Hillary. I will go next. Hi, Hillary. I will go next. And then Kyle will go after me. And, you know, we're married and you talk and you moderate and you're my sister. All of this is true 31 episodes in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't, they probably don't need to know that anymore, but it's fine. That's true. Um, I see podcasters all the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty much just going to ditto everything everybody's saying. I really mostly want to say Bill Henderson just because. It's just jumped the shark so much. I mean, I, I don't even remotely wholeheartedly even watch it, like, at all. And I just, you know, I don't even think it was really ever on the shark, if I'm being real honest. But it's just, it's been problematic. And I guess for, I don't know, someone out there maybe likes it. But, well, but not, a, yeah, exactly. So we'll talk about it. But I'm... I am also happy I will no longer have to participate in anything related to Black Lightning after this. Okay, welcome back, Hillary. And I'm Kyle, her husband, as she said. Hi, Kyle, her um, husband, as she said. I'm going to say Bill Henderson. Physically, I was present and watched this show, but like mentally, my mind, my brain completely erased it from my brain. I like, I can't even remember like any of these characters. I can't remember like almost any of the plot of this season, I had to like Wikipedia it real quick because I literally, my mind wiped it out. Repression. Exactly. It was like a trauma and I absolutely hate this show and it's a huge sigh of relief that it got canceled. All right. Welcome back, Kyle. And of course, my name is Kylie. I both moderate and participate in the circus called the DCTU series as we have been doing now for many episodes. Last time I was Lynn Stewart. This time I am painkiller. 
<laughs> so while I think season four was again like a sliver better but only in parts only in ways not all together it never really found the footing that it never really had so in the end some things I paid attention to but most of the time I was second screen experiencing myself particularly the New York Times crossword puzzle thank you NYT it was a nice little distraction but while I don't hate it maybe quite as much as everybody else I still think that in the end yeah it didn't do what it set out to do and which is funny because I read press that the creator gave when the show got canceled and he had some very highfalutin ideals around the show which we'll talk about so welcome back to the DCTU series welcome back to our black lightning portion of it this will be fairly trim because I doubt that any opinion expressed will be otherwise changed over the course of the next hour it hasn't been over the times that we have covered the show so i'm going to start though with the question i started with this season three podcast was there anything that you liked about season four at all yes the very final frame where it says greg move your head and that meant that the whole thing was over and I'd never have to watch it again. Well, that's very <laughs> helpful. I did mean with the plot of Black Lightning. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. No, not, not I mean, things. I think hands out. The, <laughs> the most enjoyment I got out of this show was laughing at the pretentious titles of every episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, seriously, just go to that page for the season and read the title of every episode. And you're just like, wow, this show thinks it's so much better than it is. Yes, the Book of Reconstruction, chapters 1 through 4. The Book of Ruin, chapters 1 through 2. The Book of Ruin, chapter 3, 4. Book of Revelation. Yeah, it was... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I... See, him, him reading off the titles of those episodes was more entertaining than the episodes were. Yeah, I'll agree. There was nothing that I liked about this season. I watched it as fast as I could with it being background noise. It was. If I could noise. have watched it at double time, I would have done just so yeah. that I could get through it quicker. You wouldn't have missed anything. No, true. Yeah, this is a show like nobody's going to be talking about. It's like, hard it's gonna, to People say. are just going to forget it ever existed. It's hard for me to say like that there's like a whole lot because, okay, you can say that maybe some slight things were different, but really, ultimately, they weren't. So, I mean, it was kind of just like more of the same. And it's kind of falling into the same trap that all of the DC CW shows are falling into. And this has just never really gotten off the ground and done anything substantial. Like it thought it was trying to, but it hasn't done that. So there's not really a whole lot of things. I mean, okay. The only thing I can say that's still kind of okay is the aesthetic of the show, but that's like it. Yeah. yeah visually it wasn't too terrible. Yeah, but was... you don't need four seasons of visually. No. <laughs> Bro, especially with everything else that's out there, I 100% agree on that. It's just, it's not offering anything. And now this genre, which don't get me wrong, I never imagined that this genre was going to grow the way that it has and become as mainstream as it has. But you really got to offer some at least halfway decent content. And this, a lot of the, a lot of the plot drama that's happening is again still. It's just very repetitive to me, or it feels repetitive, and I didn't even like it in the first place, so... In a weird defense of this show, I, it's all, it's all the, the, the DCCW shows. It's like they knew they were going to end in a season or two, and they just are trying to get through it. They're not putting like time or effort into telling a compelling story that's different from the previous season. Yeah. Yeah, it's just very CW cooker, cookie cutter. And then this season aired at the same time as like all the new Disney Marvel shows, which are very creative. Each one is very different in tone than each other. None of them are copying each other. And so like when you juxtapose the two, it's just... And they just feel like they're truer to the materials too. Like obviously there's things that have been changed in those veins too, but you know, it just to me still feels like, you know, watching any other generic drama show. It's like a lot of the... I know there's a, a big following for a lot of crime dramas out there, but I don't watch too many of those because a lot of those seem very similar to me too. So it's kind of like that same thing for me. So We're not the only ones that didn't like this. There were times at this season, and I've, I've looked at the, the numbers, there were times where episodes only had 300,000 viewers. Oh, oh, oh. There's, a, there's actually a run here where it's, 
320, 300, 360. The first episode of the season had the most viewers of the season, and then they dwindled, and then it kind of jumped for the very last episode. Well, and plus, like, a lot of the target age group that's likely tuning into that network, I feel like aren't going to relate to a lot of the storylines that are happening either. But yet they felt they had a strong enough audience where they could try to do that painkiller backdoor pilot which which thankfully never went anywhere yeah that so i wanted to talk about that it's funny because i actually thought jordan calloway improved in in terms of his acting in that one hour but the story behind him was so flat that it was like well that's just a waste i know why they wanted to do it it was because he actually had some chops but in the end, it didn't really have, it was even less. That's like the equivalent of Sony doing their side movies, piggyback, you know, with some of the rights they still have to some of the Marvel characters. They're not. They can't carry their own stories. They can't carry their own stories. They're not really caring about the content they put out because they're just piggybacking off the popularity of, of the bigger properties that are actually with you know, Marvel all together and whatnot. Like I'll use Morbius as an example because it's just not that it's not a well put together movie. It hasn't done well. It's not really true to the, you know, it's a more obscure character that probably more comic booky people are going to be even familiar with from the get go. And it just, it didn't stand out. It got steamrolled because they could have put more energy into it. But again, it's just like another side thing because they're just trying to keep something going. And and this is like the equivalent of that, but it's like small time. Well, I just wanted to say that when everybody was talking about the titles and we're talking about the visual aesthetic, that's one of the things that I thought was positive was those comic book panel <laughs> with the title. <laughs> And I still enjoyed the music selections. They had a lot of rights to a lot of music that you don't really hear on the other CW shows, which was kind of interesting. But I think this season, yeah, was ultimately, A, it's a season that probably should have happened two seasons ago, and B, and not been repeated, and B, it was kind of a drag. The biggest drag was the fact I I still despise Christine Adams, who plays Lynn, She's kind of a terrible actress, and she had so much of the action this time. The whole storyline with Jennifer, because China and McLean, if they hadn't canceled the show, China would have left the show. She was she was trying to get herself out of her contract, so she did a reduced number of episodes. So while that was happening, she exploded in the ionosphere, and JJ came back from the ionosphere and turns out to be this other thing. And that might have been cool, except for the fact that it wasn't, (laughs) you know, it was executed (laughs) poorly. (laughs) And also, China is a much better actress than the person that played JJ behind her. And then all the rest of it, it just, even the, the stuff that made Black Lightning even remotely different, which was the family stuff, was a complete and utter drag for most of the season. So then by the end of the season, it was like, even if you liked the show at all before which I know none of you But see, I still even think that that's kind of even a weak... Like, I know that's what they were going for, but, like, to me, The Flash for a long time heavily focused on family and, like, in a lot of different ways, and it just did it a whole lot better. I don't know. Yeah, it just felt more like a soap opera to me. You know, when you can watch a show and feel like the actors don't give a shit anymore, you really know it's dead. Yeah, because they're just doing it because they have to and they still have a job. Yeah. They but felt they would like rather work on only... something else if it comes up. <laughs> right. It felt like some of these people were only there because they were contractually obligated to be so. And the rest of them just weren't good. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, I got my chance. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, and the positive note, spoiler, 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 Tobias got killed at the end. None of you ever <laughs> liked him. And I thought there might have been some satisfaction with him landing on a spike. <laughs> That was good. <laughs> I mean, it was also predictable that that generic, was predictable, American like, predictable, but it happened. Yeah, <laughs> it had it had to happen, but we didn't need four seasons of him being the main villain. Exactly. Yeah. I still think Lala was a more compelling villain, and they put him in cement half the season. Yep. <laughs> and he looked like Han Solo in Carbonite. I don't know why. <laughs> 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 
And then Lady Eve's underling, Destiny, because obviously they couldn't get that actress back to play Lady Eve. But she was horrible, too. <laughs> so, in the end, it just ended up being Flat Soda, which is a secret hashtag we have on a different show. Charmed, same network. Flat Soda. <laughs> I like that. Flat soda. That, that actually describes it pretty well. Yeah. Good good intentions, really poor execution, and yeah, there's probably some, some copycatting all the way around. Well, so I had some pre-written questions just so we could fill an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you say flat soda, I think it's more like that flat carbonated, slightly flavored water. It's not even good enough to be flat soda. Like LaCroix? Yeah, it's like a flat LaCroix. Okay, we no, have no like trademarks that. to LaCroix, but people like it. <laughs> not flat, though. Kristen's like, I totally like LaCroix, but well, not. <laughs> LaCroix is not my first choice when it comes to flavored water. <laughs> when it's flat, I dump it. It's gross. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. It's barely passable when it's not yeah. flat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's a couple of flavors that are okay, I guess. So. Let me ask the, we're going to go through the pre-written questions, and then we'll do some looking back questions, and then we'll call it mercifully done. Does that sound like a deal? <laughs> yeah. we got to yes. get to an hour, people. I just don't have anything to, I just don't have anything to contribute about the plot. I know, I like understand. half those characters you just mentioned, I don't even remember who they are. Well, Thunder and Lightning I watched daughter. the show, I watched <laughs> okay. the season, I just, my brain hated it well, so much. <laughs> Well, the other thing is, is that Kyle does remember a lot of random shit. Yeah. So that speaks for itself, really. All right, what's your next question, Kylie? <laughs> oh, yeah, go ahead. Sure. Are you going to recommend this to a friend? That's, no. no, we're not there yet. <laughs> you can send me a But, guys, I had to clean up fresh dog puke off a brand new carpet this morning, and that was more enjoyable than the show. Uh oh. <laughs> I feel like that's what the CW was doing this past weekend. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Burn. <laughs> <laughs> so was the transition okay so just, here's the pre-written questions i prepared for this the show did a small time jump one year later after the markovian invasion and grave digger and all the things that happened in season three however it just kind of dropped us in the middle of the drama was the transition to the seasons explained to your satisfaction did you even care not one iota didn't nope. care, nope. but it also didn't work. Nope. Yes, what Kristen said, and nope. Yeah, it felt like there was a whole new group of writers, and they were like, what happened in the first three seasons? I don't know, let's just say a year later. Or maybe the just... writers just didn't even care anymore. They're just trying to do their homework. Like, they're like they're doing their assignment, and they're just trying to get it turned in. Can we put writers in inverted commas for that? Sure. Yeah, they're they're, they're, like doing, they're triple student. spacing. This you punctuate like however you want. Like high school students getting ready to start their semester, and they're just looking at the syllabus, and then they're like, "Oh shit!" And then they just quickly wrote some shit, and they adjusted the margins. They yeah, <laughs> exactly, one hundred percent. And then they were like, this is perfect. I mean, this is CW. I mean, they're probably just trying to get some of their, well, I hope maybe, I don't know, maybe some of them aren't new to, I don't know. I didn't look up who was writing it. It's as if the writers had some bots watch like a thousand hours of all like super. Yeah, like bots. And then bots wrote the season. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll give you that. It would be. If you fed fed a bot every CW show. Mm Mm-hmm imaginable this is the season it would kick out mm-hmm. i mean there have been a couple of decent shows on cw but let's be real like for the most part how often outside of those big popular shows that everybody talks about would you be like oh yeah i'm gonna watch cw right now i like penn and teller's fool us <laughs> I, mean, I, I do like nancy drew for but that's the- not even good because of cw that's good because of penn and teller yeah Correct. <laughs> like I said, I mean, I watched Nancy Drew on CW, and it's campy, and it's soapy, and it's stupid, but I like Nancy Drew, and so I'm like... But, like, a straight-up guilty pleasure, no bit. Yeah, straight-up guilty pleasure. Well, like, I like some classes, like, I still like Dawson's Creek from back in the day when it was the WB, yeah, but, like, you know... Apart from apart from the couple superhero shows left, the two shows... Supernatural. That I, well, that one's done now. So, apart from the superhero shows that are left and Riverdale and Charmed, which I am somehow forced to watch because I produce this podcast. <laughs> I don't 
really watch anything on the CW. Supernatural's done. There's no reason for me to want to go to the CW. <laughs> and thus, my point's been made. The only show I'm watching on the CW right now is Superman and Lois. The others, I will Which is still watch. kind of a cheat. Yeah. And the others, I'll watch when I have to, to do the podcasts. That's where I'm at with all of them at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't been keeping up with any of them this season. Did Black Lightning do anything to redeem itself in the end? It got canceled. It got canceled. Yes. <laughs> it finally achieved the one thing we were hoping it would achieve. You know, the only thing I'm going to apologize for is, like, Chris Williams, because... He can be good. He's a veteran he actor. Yeah, yeah, like... Okay, so he's he's redeeming just because he's such... He's a veteran actor... And he probably brings the only, like, bit of talent to what's yeah, there. That's the guy that plays Gamby. I mean... Yeah, James it, Ramar was on Dexter. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's true. He's also a veteran actor. He's, yeah. Those two, acting-wise, were fine. He's on everything. He's on lots of things. nothing good about the show itself. No, they did the best that they could with the material they were given. Yeah, and you know what? It was probably their agents or something like, hey... It's like, sure, I could do it with a paycheck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're not worried because they can still go do other things. Yeah, they'll be fine. Here's the million dollar question. Is this show really any worse than some of the other DCTU Flareover shows? No, yeah. they're all bad. I mean, yeah, they're all uh, a downward slide now, but this is the I mean, bottom this, barrel. This one didn't even get through a full season before it took the turn for the worst, though. At least with the others, they had some quality for a short period of time. But uh, I'll say 10 episodes. There's some seasons of Arrow that were as unenjoyable to watch. Yes. I don't know yeah. if Flash ever got that bad or Legends, because Legends at least kind of knows what it... Legends is, has gotten really bad. I stopped mm. watching it. Because everything is falling apart in the back end of that show, too. Yeah. yeah. Like, once they lost the rights to Constantine, and, like, that was the first... It's falling apart. Like, we've Even already talked then. about this. Even well, before they lost then. And they lost some of their best actors and you know, yeah. characters and, and yada, like, yada, yada. And I'm like, for me, even The Flash, too. Like, again, I'm sorry to say this, but it is so formulaic now. Like, it's crazy. And bloated. And bloated. And it's so, again, it's basically a soap opera. It's nothing like it was. It was so, it was like innovative TV when it first came out. It really kind of was. And, and that lasted all of like the first two and a half seasons. Like really, I mean, the other seasons were okay, but I mean, it's just, it's just so to me right now with the way that I feel of it, there's a lot of equal feeling across the board for me outside of some things in the beginning. My, hey. opi my opinion fluctuates. I, I mean, I find Batwoman to be far more or less are less enjoyable because Batwoman doesn't even have good music and I said this in the chat it screws with the Bat universe and that just fills me with rage rage when I when whereas I, I don't know this one so I don't care <laughs> when I was fandom watching this and I think it was season two of Batwoman I would choose Batwoman over this yeah yeah I'd choose Batwoman over this I'd choose Batwoman over this I mean and that's mostly bad. just because it's a Bat costume I guess yeah <laughs> well, I mean, at least they're trying. I mean, no one cares about those characters really in the in you know in the Bat family. But well, I mean, a little bit. But at least they're still attempting it a little bit. That's all I'll say. But yeah, I would still maybe a smudge. But they're all bad to me. Great. <laughs> <laughs> We're filling an hour. I I know. <laughs> Attempting. <laughs> Attempting. I don't know if it's going to happen. I'm trying. Okay, that's why we have looking back. So now we're going to look back, which this can go fast because we covered the whole show. So, how disappointed were you that none of the other DC CW characters ever appeared on this show? Not once. They were mentioned. Mostly Barry Allen was mentioned. Nobody else came or saw or was. You mean outside of the, hey, I went and did this thing, and now I'm back here flying through the sky. I mean, honestly, it just makes me all the more annoyed that we covered it as part of the Arrowverse, because it's never been part of the Arrowverse. He showed up for literally two minutes in one crossover. Yep. The show could have been thrown away. It wouldn't have mattered one bit. Yeah, I mean, they easily could have replaced Cress Williams' Black Lightning in that big crossover multiverse thing with any other a side character, an well, old character. If you anything. remember... If you remember, he shows up, he tries to do something, and it doesn't even help. 
It doesn't it work. It didn't even work. So it's like that scene didn't even accomplish anything. Yeah. And he was still on a separate Earth than everybody else at the end of it. Well, see, I thought we're all collapsed now. Yeah, I thought we were on one of the Well, it didn't, it didn't even seem like it since nobody ever came to say hi. Okay. Metaphorically so. speaking, then. He's on yeah. a separate Earth. <laughs> Metaphorically speaking, he's on a totally different Earth. Yeah. They never bring, I mean... The area where he lives, Freeland, it's never mentioned in any other show. That's true. And to that end, I echo Kyle a little bit. I'm kind of frustrated. I think they baited the audience of this show. And I think they baited people that were following these shows, generally speaking. We covered it, so good for you. There, This panel is going to get a big gift at the end of all these shows. Because you've done the <laughs> most episodes of everybody, and including ones you don't like. <laughs> So we already compared this season. Everybody was pretty much at the bottom. I think. I mean, I think you've you've stayed bottom half of the character question, but have sunk further with each passing season. I don't know if that's because you think the seasons are worse, or just because you don't want to watch them more. <laughs> you can qualify that if you want. I think I originally started off with maybe maybe there could be hope that it would find its foot. Ding! That didn't happen. No, it never, yeah. it never found its footing or its stride. Any of the other metaphors we want to give it, it never came to fruition. <laughs> all, the, all the gentlemen are silent. It was just poorly made TV all around. It was, that's all I can say. I mean, I can't see the grumpy Brit's face, but I can tell by looking at the other two that ultimately they're just echoing what we're saying out loud. I know, but it's a podcast. Yeah, nothing new to contribute. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Sitting there watching the screen. (laughs) I I feel like a writer on the show. I have nothing else to contribute. I see. I will just say, instead of this, just watch Peacemaker. It's awesome. It makes fun of the DC universe, and it's clever. It doesn't play it safe like all these PW shows do. You're supposed to wait to recommend. Well, I'm recommending it now because, like, I need to. I need to think of something infinitely better mm-hmm. than this show. Is that the John like Cena everything. thing? Yes. Yeah, that's the John Cena one. What What network is that on? Or HBO, HBO Max. HBO. I am re-upping where that all show. the other DC content lives. Yep. And something that actually connects to like Batman and Superman and the good characters. Pennyworth is on there too, and that's kind of fun. What'd you say? Pennyworth is on oh. the HBO Max, and that's kind of a fun show. It originally well, even a lot of like never. the animated business on there is really good. Like that Harley Quinn show is great. That that's hilarious. You, you know, you think about it. Pennyworth is a better show than Black Lightning, and Pennyworth is the backstory of Batman's Butler. <laughs> Who is very important in the DC universe, right, but right. still, but still, he's a si- he is he's a side character. He's got a very big place in comic book nerds' hearts, but ultimately, yes, he's still a side character in and many has regards. No superpowers whatsoever. Literally, the backstory of a butler is more interesting than Black Lightning. This but seems we like I a- loved Alfred from the get go, so that's the qualifier there. That's yeah. True. This seems like a great segue. Now, y'all asked for this last time. Here it is. Have at it. Did the writers correct for prior ills? I'm hearing no. So, grade Black Lightning at the end, or rank it according to the star business, whatever you choose. I think these writers should have their crayons taken away. They did. (laughs) That's true. That's true. There we go. There's the silver lining to all of it. And the bright side is they can't be shuffled to the other DC shows because those are all getting the axe too. So give a grade or a rating. I don't remember the the low ratings for the star business because I actually (laughs) didn't think I was ever going to have to do it. But I mean, one star. Pass on this one, guys. it's a snoozer. It's, it's not star. Star. like I know one, two, three, four, five, but she always has some, you know, <laughs> some things, some like I was saying it. thing that comes with it. I was saying it. It's pass on this one, guys. It's a snoozer. It's not good. It's not funny. Oh, it's yeah. not fun. Yeah, that one. <laughs> the snoozer. The one that I really never thought I was gonna say it. Yeah. One. If I could go lower, I would. I am. No, I am giving it lower. I'm giving it zero stars. Yeah. What but you <laughs> watched it. Point two five zeros if you don't watch it. <laughs> All right, zero 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 one. I'm yeah, not I'm, doing I'm not... that. <laughs> I need to average this, and I'm not averaging a thousandth. 
<laughs> All right, one one millionth of a star. Or that! <laughs> You're going it's so low that If you were coloring the stars in online, it would be a single pixel in one star. Nick, do That's you have hilarious. a real answer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, zero stars. This is four seasons of a show. Time I will never get back. Yeah, I want my life back that I spent watching the show. I mean, this is the first time I have actually ever had any animosity towards Kylie, and that's just because she made me watch it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yes, I do not want my present to be Black Lightning related. <laughs> <laughs> just oh, I don't know. That might be a collector's item one day. <laughs> no! Now I'm going to get you all Black Lightning. <laughs> so... I wasn't planning on it. But they, even <laughs> ma- they probably didn't even make any merch, dude. If somebody goes to a lot of Comic-Cons, I haven't seen Black Lightning anything. No, I don't think it exists. <laughs> okay. Well, okay, so that's how you know, too. That's a really good thing to point out. You always gauge how people feel, especially nerds, at Comic-Con. Ain't nobody giving any love to Black Lightning. People still show love towards Stephen Amell Green Arrow and Grant Gustin... Barry Allen Flash, but you know, they ain't no love towards Black, but that's not happening. Mm-mm. Nope. Nick, did you One give star a- for me. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get something out of this. Spoiler alert! <laughs> <laughs> I, I also am gonna give it one star at the end, because the hope is gone. Whatever little hope there was, and yeah. Black Lightning. <laughs> so, pass on this one, guys. It's a snoozer. I think that's when I wrote that thing all those years ago, just for this kind of a show in the end. Hmm. Did you like the series finale at all? Do you remember the series finale at all? I, I remember Tobias on a spike and then him getting electrocuted and thinking, I wish somebody had done that at the very beginning to everybody. Aw, not the good guys. Oh, all of them. No. <laughs> really? I have no love for this show or any of the characters therein. I see. Well, they don't have to. It's just generic. It's not even generic. It's worse than generic. So no one cares about the series finale. No. Other than him dying at the end, like I don't remember any. I like they. He passed the torch. Yeah, he passed the torch to the girls. They were having a wedding reception for Anissa and Grace. Jennifer was back saying, "Who am I now?" Basically, characters I have no emotional investment in. Pretty much. So you just it, it's there, it's happening. You were like the care. final credits rolled and I'm throwing a party now. <laughs> All right, well <laughs> let's quickly go through the looking back questions because they'll be quick. And we still got a little like ten more minutes. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna cut away especially some remarks. <laughs> so <laughs> do you think this show would hold up with the passage of time? No. It already hasn't. I mean if you had to the- DVD box set, you might be able to use it to hold up a table leg that's a little short. I see. Did somebody buy that? (laughs) Hopefully they got it as a gift. A gag gift? A a gift? A gag gift. Like, 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 like maybe it came from a gift from, like, that one aunt that doesn't know what she's doing. Like, there's always, like, a relative that don't know what they're doing when they're buying, like, you know, like, the presents and things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you like superheroes. Yeah, they they saw lightning, thought it was a flash. Yeah. Or it's, like, a white elephant gift. I would assume you someone get giving you that is your nemesis. Yeah. So no. just and then you feel like you have to hang on to it because someone gave it to you, and you're like, "No, oh. you don't. Do not feel obligated." I've learned that. There's always <laughs> white elephants. She's like, "I've totally experienced what you're talking about." You can, you can bring it, it to, to white people. elephants. Free gift. Or garage sales are for. <laughs> or white elephant gift giving. Does there you no go. one play that anymore? It's fun. You can get rid of stuff that way. Short answer is they all thought it was time to go four seasons ago and they will not ever watch more seasons. <laughs> this will never be rewatched. No. Never. No. And they all thought it, yeah, it should have ended sooner. Okay. <laughs> the show was created by Brock and Salim McKeel, who also write and direct many of the episodes. This is the first time they've created anything, though Salim wrote on Luke Cage. <laughs> that makes so much sense. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that piece of tidbit if you didn't already know <laughs> that's a name i'm going to be on the lookout for <laughs> to not to watch avoid. Okay. <laughs> uh, the only time you're going to see that name is next time you go to denny's you'll find them as a manager there oh jeez 
This is not their strength. I'm sure they're very talented in other ways. This is not it. Or they just need more experience. Oh, yeah, I'm trying does. to be positive a little. <laughs> they're probably talented in many, many other things. <laughs> That's Kristen's fault back on that one. <laughs> That's the positivity. Mm -hmm. I mean, avoiding. I don't know. I don't write for a television show. I could give you an hour and you'd come up with a better season than they did. Well, normally we do as we're talking anyway. And I'm like, damn, we should have just, we should have sat down and anyways. I'm wondering how cheap it would be to buy the CW right now. That's a Nobody seems to want it. So I don't think it really matters what you bid. That's like buying like a lemon car though, dude. Yeah, you can fix it up. You could sink a lot of money into it. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to at this point. <laughs> uh, you could run twenty four seven repeats of Law and Order, and they'd get better ratings than this show did at the end. Jeez, <laughs> I think is anyone counting these or what? <laughs> counting what? Our analogies, Spencer specifically. You you are like making some remarks, but he's just a string of analogies. <laughs> yeah, hashtag acid bombs today. <laughs> Spencer ironically hashtag The funny thing too is like We're going to Comic Con in two weeks And they have a bunch of the CW people there Whose shows are getting axed So those are going to be really awesome panels yeah, like That Katie are going to be like really, gonna be there. really depressing <laughs> That they have to do a Comic Con Like a week and a half after their show was canceled But then there's also a bunch of DC people From the HBO shows That are going to be there Kyle, I want you at the the panel where Katie Lance is on it. I want you to ask her if she's feeling like she's been released from prison. <laughs> yes, Rep- do that and report back. Hillary reported for us. Since their shows are canceled and not contractually obligated to promote them, yeah. they might be awesomely honest. Well, that's how we knew Stephen Amell was over it because when I saw, and how, that was already a while ago. That was in like 2017, I want to say. Or seventeen or eighteen, and at that, you, like you could just already tell, like I said, that he was over it. But he couldn't say anything bit negative about the show. But he was like really trying to skirt around. He's like, questions. I'm tired of night shooting, and I never see my family, and like that's literally how he was talking about it. And Arrow still had a a little bit, a little bit, but. I mean, I really detested that at the end, too, but I'm just saying it a little bit. Yeah. I don't know. So, anyways, yeah. I'm sure someone will inevitably ask her because there's always some person there that doesn't have a lot of coof with that stuff anyway. Right. They just say stuff. And yeah, the actors are like, if I was there. yeah. Yep. So, you wouldn't follow these creators, huh? No. Mm-hmm. Actively avoid. <laughs> okay. See? Sometimes the I would, opposite. I would actively can. cross the street if I saw them. Again, actively avoid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about the actors? A couple of them, like Cress and the guy who plays Gamby. They're both good actors. I didn't have a problem with them as actors. I just had a problem with the show they were on. Yeah, I mean, it just depends on what they go to. Yeah. I mean, I watched Cress Williams on Heart of Dixie when, like, during COVID when we were trying to find new stuff to watch. <laughs> I watched that short-lived CW series, and he was he was really good in it. Again, the material was campy and soapy and kind of sucked, but he did really well. I would like to see him actually do something worthwhile. I think he'd be great. I wouldn't purposefully follow any of the actors. If Cress was in it, I would be like, hey, it's Cress Williams mm-hmm. or James Ramar. Yeah. They don't, none of these actors fall on a list of if I saw their name pop up, I'd watch the show. There are actors that I do that with. You know, many of the friends, for example, and some other people in my favorite shows, but not not, not any of these people, not even Cress. Not to say that I wouldn't enjoy him being there. I, I wouldn't avoid a show because those couple of guys were in it. Really yeah, what I, I, wouldn't mean. I wouldn't specifically either. go, oh, I want to watch it because they are. Right, but I would just, I'd like to see Cress do something that he can really get into. And China the and... The list... Kylie, I'm noticing Christine Adams, she played Lynn, right? Yes. Everything she's been in has been canceled, including she was on a show on NBC too this season that one season and canceled. So she's like television poison. Yeah, I don't think she's very, she's actually British. She's in yeah. real life British and she has a little bit more of an extensive British television resume. I've actually seen her in some British shows and she wasn't bad in those, but the stuff I've seen her in here has not been good. 
Yeah. So maybe she just shouldn't work with an American accent, and maybe she'll be better. Yeah. Who knows? A lot of the time, when you when you have to act with an accent that you're not very comfortable with, it, part of the acting goes away. In yeah. fact, I noticed that the first time that Benedict Cumberbatch was Doctor Strange, his acting wasn't as strong as when he has done other stuff in his natural accent. I believe it. China Ann McLean actually has a fairly good resume, but she apparently has left Hollywood, at least as of last check. That was one of the reasons why she wanted to jump from Black Lightning. She was through yeah, with she's, the business. Yeah, I, read, I think I read an interview about with that, too, and she's, she's done. She's moved out of L.A., California. She's off mm-hmm. not doing it anymore. I mean, if I had to work on this show, that would probably be my <laughs> choice. Yeah, it'd be my breaking point, too. She was on Like, Tyler this is Perry's as good as I can show. get. I'm done. Well, I was going to say, she was on Tyler... Perry's House of Pain, which actually was quite popular, so this was probably a little less of a thing. Not so great for her career anyway, but she didn't like Hollywood. Okay, what's our time? Okay, we're 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 very let me just check the recording before I ask this question. Land this plane. I'm going to it's we're not quite an hour, so I need you to say more than no. Would you recommend this show to others? Why or why not? <laughs> I would no. The problem I is if you've already said why not. Say I mean, so do they want to listen to us like we're a broken record or... <laughs> uh, I or, can't in good conscience recommend this to anyone. Maybe if somebody really liked Wayne Brady. But that was only season three. And I don't think he yeah. was that good. <laughs> so. Right. Did you help them change their mind? Oh, I'm just getting I like Wayne Brady. If you I mean, go all the way through this podcast and think that we're going to recommend it to you, call your doctor on Monday morning and make an appointment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's such a gluttony of like good superhero shows now. This is literally the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, as a big They're like especially like what they wanted with this one was like social commentary. Go watch Falcon and Winter Soldier. It does it a million times better in like Six and, episodes. And actually follows the actual material and... It's more creative, more heartfelt, better actors, better production values. There's literally no reason to watch this show when you have such better alternatives. You said bottom of the barrel. I would say bottom of the septic tank. I told you. Who's counting? <laughs> there, there has to be a tally at some point. It just should be turned into a drinking game. Anytime Spencer makes this kind of a comment. No, people, we it. can't, I cannot condone that because people will be dead. <laughs> so. yeah, yeah, you'll have to stick to the 40 proof, not the 100 proof, because you'll be dead. <laughs> the alcoholic poisoning would, hey, would be happening. We would send all responsibility, no liability for that. Please don't sue us if you decide to follow that advice. <laughs> we have I no never said We actually had that at the beginning of the episode. This episode is brought to you by Tito's Vodka. Every time Spencer gives an acerbic... Comments, you have to do a shot. Again, no, we can't. <laughs> you, you give acerbic comments even when you don't hate things. <laughs> so that's sure. just not even fair. <laughs> well, no, I don't think any of us can recommend it. And that's really where it's at. Is it better? So I'll ask this question. I asked it the first time. Luke Cage or Black Lightning? Which is better? Luke Cage. Luke Cage. Luke Cage. See, there's a bright lining, see, because... <laughs> When you watch Luke Cage, you were all like, I have to drink wine to get through this. For this one, now you can drink wine. <laughs> no, this one's definitely hard liquor. Yeah, probably. I, I guess you could say that if you really This want one induces to, migraines. If you really want to enjoy Luke Cage, watch Black Lightning first. I don't think that's offensive and is actually quite true. <laughs> so, because it's yeah, what it, I, The thing is, is that there actually is redeeming a lot of fair redeeming qualities about Luke Cage. I just, again, felt that going back to that just quick synopsis, they could have probably done something a little bit more with his character specifically just because he is so much more beyond what they portrayed in the show and some of his stuff was a little generic too but but way that way way more realized than anything in this you could tell the people making luke cage had a plan and cared. were executing it they and- cared yeah, they were crafting a show and it I mean for some people it hit really well. Like that's what I think this show yeah. I don't I haven't heard people are either just not watching this show or there isn't anyone who really is really enjoying it. Whereas if you remember there are people saying, No, Luke Cage was one of their favorites of the Defenders 
Yeah. I'm betting Luke Cage had far, far, far superior ratings to this, even though Netflix never released any numbers. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would say that if you've made it through this far and you're listening to this and you you actually like Black Lightning, tweet at us, CPU Podcast, Instagram, Couch Potatoes Unite, find us on Facebook. I actually am legitimately curious to know if... I don't think I want them to contact us. They'd clearly be deranged. Don't heckle the people! How many times? <laughs> I, I will personally craft an acid bomb for anyone that tweets us saying that they like black lightning. It will be tailored specifically to you. Why are people so hostile? It's not but then they have hard. to give, I mean, there has to be valid reasons why. I mean, everyone's going to say, well, it's just my opinion, and that's true. It is just everybody's opinion, but. This was all hypothetical. You guys are getting <laughs> Nick, are you raising your hand? Oh, I was like, I'm not. I People could like this show. I won't understand it, but I don't. <laughs> yeah, that's really more where I'm at. Like, I want to under. If they do like it, I want to understand. Would you why. Would you trust somebody who enjoys this show to watch your children? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> no. I, <yeah. laughs> Is that the only thing I know about them? <laughs> that's the only thing I know about them. Did you, you, didn't you do any background checks at least? <laughs> Television background checks. <laughs> Accepted. Next generation. <laughs> Quantum <Wow>. leap. <laughs> At this time, would you like, I'm going to give you the option to get in your last real good sentiment toward black lightning. I neutralized that word, but go ahead. <laughs> we have to round I've up. Had the- more, I've had more pleasurable bowel movements. Okay. I guess I can't be satisfying, sure. Are you just mimicking Spencer's, or was that yours? <laughs> I really just don't have anything else to say. I feel like I'm beating a dead horse. Yeah, I've already said I want my life back from the hours that I spent watching the show. The, the kind of sad thing, though, is I feel bad for the actors having to make this, because we only get, like, you know, one episode, one hour an episode. Imagine all the time they put into this show. Ooh. How many days and nights, and it's just so all terrible. The, all the training and rehearsal. Yeah. Before they Costume even fittings it. and everything. like Memorizing their We time. think, like, I was complaining about not getting the time back. This is a whole chunk of their lives that they're never going to get back. I really hope that they were compensated fairly and that they earned a very, very good paycheck. I have a feeling they didn't get paid anything, like, even probably what the people on Flash and Arrow did. Because, like, they didn't promote this show as much. They didn't... I, I guarantee you they didn't give them anything. But I just... I hope that it was money that they... Where the actors felt somewhat properly compensated. And the crew. Oh, my gosh. That poor crew. Whew. Yeah. The fight choreography actually didn't totally suck this season. That was... That was fine. Painkillers was pretty good. I'm trying to find something. It's hard. Mm-hmm. I don't have a final, final word. I'm just thinking that it's probably good this is done. <laughs> Very, very good. Yeah. yeah. Well, with that said, and I think we've squeaked it into an hour, what I'd yes. like to do is think. If you don't edit anything out. Well, some of it will <laughs> be. It'll, it'll be close <laughs> enough when the end credits are added. That's right. <laughs> yeah, read them slow. <laughs> well, some of them are canned, but okay. <laughs> anyway, what I'd like to do is think profusely Hillary, Kyle, Nick, Kristen, and Spencer for not only watching the show they didn't want to watch because we were all misled into this Flareoverse Association, but also for talking about it, although sometimes it's fun to hate watch a show. Next time we should just do it together with drinks. That's all, but COVID happened in there and that was the weirdness. So thank you very much for joining me to talk about Black Lightning. I think I'm going to throw it to the credits lest any tomatoes come my way. Couch Potatoes Unite! Exclamation point was produced by Back Pocket Productions, run by yours truly, the Chief Couch Potato, which is really another way of saying executively produced by me, Kylie Piet. My associate producers are Krista Pennington and Celine Resmer. I edit this podcast, and our logo is by Rebecca Wallace. Our marketing graphic artist is Krista. Our theme song was written by Sarah Milbratz and sung by Sarah, Amy McDaniel, and Kaus Resmer. Kaus played the keyboard, Ian McDonough played the bass, Christian Somerville played the guitar, and the whole shebang was engineered by Kyle Aspinall and Christian. We hail from Grand Rapids, Michigan. 
Please, if you like what you hear, take the time to rate us, give us stars, provide comments, or review us wherever you get your podcasts. Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, CastBox, and Amazon are just a few of the places you can find us, but we're also on YouTube. We have our website. Otherwise, feel free to tell us how we're doing, what we should add, subtract, keep, or toss. You know how it goes. And if you have suggestions for shows we might consider, contact us at our website where we have a guest book, by email at couchpotatoesunitepodcast at gmail.com, our Facebook, our Twitter at CPU Podcast, our Instagram at Couch Potatoes Unite, or wherever you get your podcasts. Though, of course, we add new and old shows to chat about around the water cooler all the time and always have new episodes coming down the pipe. Just listen to our intros. If you miss old episodes or want to know in general what shows we cover, just search for us. Find us wherever you do searchable things on the internet. Don't forget that exclamation point. Or contact us via our website, our email, our social media accounts, and stay up on all the new events and episodes by our humble little podcast, Couch Potatoes Unite! Exclamation point! Until the next time, Black Lightning is available in its entirety on Netflix because the CW still somehow has that contract, even though most people are fleeing Netflix and Netflix is doing a thing. That's a whole other podcast. In the meantime, our DC2 panel will next reconvene shortly sometime, in fact, to discuss seasons two and three, the most recent and final two seasons of the now-canceled Batwoman. So until next time, until next episode, new episodes are published every Wednesday. Keep listening. Keep watching. Stay tuned. Good night. Bye. 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 Let's watch Moon Knight.